All right, we're in part four of Is the Lord My Shepherd? And we're going through the most famous psalm in all of the Bible, Psalm 23, which begins, The Lord is my shepherd. And in Psalm 23, there are 12 blessings associated with the Lord's leadership. And when I say the Lord, I mean the Lord Jesus Christ. His leadership is associated with 12 blessings in that psalm. And uh, the psalm itself, just a little history on it, was written a thousand years before Jesus Christ was born. And uh, David wrote the psalm, and it is a description of the Lord Jesus Christ. And uh, even though he's not going to be born for another thousand years when the psalm is written, uh, he's alive and well because Jesus Christ is God and he's been around forever. He's the creator of everything you see. He just one day became a man and showed up in a body so that he could substitute himself for mankind. And so Psalm 23, we're in verse 3, and uh, the Bible says this regarding the Lord's leadership as the good shepherd. He says, He restoreth my soul. He restoreth my soul. Now, let me say something about the soul, because that's uh, the part of you, really, it is you. It's not just a part of you, it is you. And it's the part, I guess you could say, that is most neglected. It's the most neglected because the world and the way this world is structured, it is structured so that you never think about your soul. And the devil has been incredibly successful with that. So never think about your soul. Um, there was a, the Lord Jesus Christ tells an account of a rich man, very successful businessman, who was going to tear down his barns and build bigger barns. And uh, he, was, he was running a very successful business. And the Lord said to him, Thou fool, this night thy soul shall be required of thee. Meaning he's, he was going to die. The body that the soul was wrapped in was going to die, and the soul would be required of the man. And uh, all that he had done, his professional life, his, his success, his need to build bigger barns, bigger buildings, was all going to be irrelevant when his soul was required of him. And one day your soul will be required of you. And uh, uh, I hope it's not too late. I, I hope you uh, get to the Good Shepherd because he's, he's the one that restores the soul. And uh, the Lord has a, has a tremendous obstacle uh, between you and I in that most people don't care about their souls. They, they care about their bodies, we want to take care of our bodies, and that's, that's all right. We want to take care of our cars. We, we like our houses. We like our guns. We like our boats, our fishing poles. But our souls, hmm, don't really think about that too much. But that's the most important part. That's you. That's you. I'll give you one, one illustration here. You know, you know that in you there are at least three minds at work. Uh, you have the carnal mind that's associated with the body, the flesh that you can see. And that, that mind simply says, when I'm, I'm hungry, I need to eat. I'm thirsty, give me something to drink. Uh, I want this, give me this. I saw this thing on TV, I want to get that. I, I, I want to get this. I, I, it's, just, it's just the carnal mind. And it operates by the senses and the sensations that, that flow through this body. And uh, that's one mind. Another mind at work that you have, you personally, is the mind that says sometimes the body wants something, but I don't really need that. And so there's a second mind at work in you. Another, you could say, I don't know, you, I don't like the word stream of consciousness, but there's something else at work in you that says, it's kind of the counter to the body that says, 
you know, maybe we shouldn't eat that. Maybe we, maybe we, we should save our money and wait before we buy that gun. Maybe, so there, there's another voice there. And then there's the third voice that makes the decision. Between those two decisions, you have the body saying, I saw this fishing pole, give me, give me, I wanna get that, I wanna get that. And then the other voice that says, we may not be able to afford that, I need to kind of think about this. And then the third and final voice, which says, this is what we're gonna do. We're not gonna buy the fishing pole or we are going to buy the fish and pole. And that decision maker, that's your soul. That's you. That's what you are. You're the soul. You're wrapped in a body. You have a, a conscience. You, you, have a, you produce a spirit about you. But you are soul. You're a soul. Now, all of that said, Jesus Christ is the good shepherd, and he's the shepherd of our souls. This verse says, he restoreth my soul. So something broke it down. There's something that's breaking down my soul. And, and when I think of restoration, when I think of restoration, uh, there's, so, there's so many shows on TV that are about restoration. You think of a, an old car or some old thing that's being pulled out of a junk pile and being repainted and the, it being oiled up and putting new gears on and, and tires and things like that and basically being taken from the corruption and the corrupt state it was in into a, 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 a usable, functioning, purposeful condition. It's restored. It's, it's been brought back to life, so to speak. So there, there's the restoration of the soul. So what is it that breaks down the soul? What, what is it that, that causes corruption in the soul? Well, it's, it's the world. It's the, it's the lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, and the pride of life. Peter said it this way. He said of Lot, a man named Lot, living in Sodom and Gomorrah, where there was sodomy and just uh, uh, perversion everywhere and he said of Lot that he vexed his righteous soul in seeing and hearing and so things were entering into his ears things were entering into his eyes and it was causing his soul to be vexed and corrupted and so uh, you say what breaks down the soul the world the world which is defined as the lust of the eyes the lust of the flesh and the pride of life those things those things corrupt those things destroy a man's soul but Jesus Christ his leadership the good shepherd the Bible says he restores the soul you know what the, sto the soul your soul is looking for righteousness to be clothed in righteousness Jesus Christ is the Lamb of God, and, and lambs just lambs produce wool. Take that wool and, and you turn it into a, a, a fabric and you and you make it into clothing. So that lamb produces clothing and covering for the soul. Uh, Jesus Christ, the Good Shepherd, he restores the soul like restoring a car back to its usefulness. Uh, it restores back to its intended purpose, restored to fellowship. Some, some, some things about re restoration, uh, maybe it's, it's fellowship that's been broken down. There's enmity between you and the Lord. And maybe you don't, you don't care about it. Maybe, maybe you've never had a relationship with the Lord. And so the fact that you have sin may not matter to you and may it, it will matter one day because that sin has polluted your soul and and it's going to be taken into account and so it will be paid for one day either by you or you will allow jesus christ to pay for your sin who which he already did but that sin is going to be dealt with and 
uh, the Lord said, he said, your iniquities have separated between you and your God. Uh, your soul is you, that's you. That's the eternal part of you. Um, I've been to many, many funerals and a lot of times something is, is said to the effect of, you look at the, the body in the casket and people will say, well, that's just, that's just a shell. He's not there anymore. And the reality is that's true not there anymore. The person is not there anymore. The body has let go of the life and the life is either with the Lord, absent from the body, to be present with the Lord if you're in Jesus Christ, or the alternative is a soul that goes to hell and waits for judgment. A hell is just like being locked up in a county county jail you're waiting for your trial date and uh, that's what hell is and for the soul those that die when the body is dropped the life goes that's the soul goes is either with Jesus Christ because you've you've trusted you've been clothed with Jesus Christ you've trusted Jesus Christ or or the body goes to hell I mean, the soul goes to hell and waits judgment. And so Jesus Christ, as the good shepherd, his leadership leads to the restoration of the soul. If you want your soul restored, maybe hopefully you hear this and, and you understand the importance. I think most people don't, don't get the importance uh, of spiritual matters. One day, one day you will, but I hope it's not too late. Jesus Christ, the good shepherd of, of men's souls, of men's souls, he restores the soul and what, what's been lost.